Hello, my name is Joel Kem. I'm the Chief Data Strategist with Qubit Consulting. Today in this quick video, I'm going to show you how to configure your existing Cognos Analytics installation to authenticate against Azure AD. There are three primary steps you're going to see today. The first is how to register an application in Azure. The second will be adding that Azure information as an OpenID Connect provider to Cognos Analytics. And the last piece will be importing those users from Azure into your Cognos Analytics installation. Let's begin your configuration by registering your Cognos Analytics application as an application in Azure. To register your application, you're going to follow these six steps, which I will demonstrate directly. After logging in to the Azure portal, select Azure Active Directory. A new pane opens up. In that pane, you will see an item App Registrations. Select that. Now select New Registration. We're going to call this one Cognos Analytics Localhost. Give it a meaningful name so you know what it goes to. As you noticed previously, there's already a Cognos Analytics that is our enterprise registration. So I wanted to give this one a new name so I could tell them apart. The redirect URI in this case will be your Cognos Gateway. For our purposes, we are using localhost on my local machine, and then hit register. We'll want to create a second redirect URI, this one for the login complete page in Cognos Analytics. And then save that. Next, we need to create a client secret which we will use in Cognos Analytics to authenticate our application with Azure. To create a client secret from the app registration overview page, click certificates and secrets, and then say new client secret. Give it a name. We're going to say our local and expiration, and then create it. The value you see now is only visible this one time. So copy it to your clipboard, make a record of it because we will need it when we configure Cognos. So we're now just about ready to configure our Cognos application to use Azure AD. There is a bit of information we will need from Azure, but first I'm gonna show you how to go into Cognos configuration and add the resource for the provider because that template will show us what we need to go back and get from Azure. With Cognos configuration open, go to security and authentication, right click and add a new resource, the namespace. We're gonna call this one Azure AD. The type is Open ID Connect. And that type is Azure AD. Now add it, and here you're gonna see a number of things we need to go get from Azure. While the namespace we get to put in, again, stay with Azure AD, we will need to go get the discovery endpoint, the client identifier, our client secret, that's what I had you copy out before, and then update our return URL to match what we put into the redirect. Starting on our app overview page in Azure, we need to copy our client ID. I paste it into Notepad so I have it for later. And we'll also need our tenant ID. Copy that, and we'll have it for later. The last piece we need from here is our client secret, but you copied that in a previous step. And if you didn't, well, you're probably going to need to recreate it because you only get to see them that one time. 
we can now go back to Cognos configuration and enter those properties which we just copied out of Azure AD. The first is the tenant ID. That was the second property that we copied. We'll replace tenant ID Then we want to replace the client identifier. That was the first property that we copied out. And now, if you saved it, we need to enter our client secret. You'll paste it in there, you'll confirm it, and you'll say OK. Finally, we're going to enter our return URL which just requires removing the S, and it was one of our redirect URIs, if you remember, it was localhost with port 9300. We're almost ready to start Cognos Analytics, but we need to do one more thing, and that is get the certificate off of Microsoft Online and import it into the certificate store in Cognos Analytics. To do that, we're going to go back to our web browser and enter in the URL our discovery endpoint. From here, you can see all the information that Cognos is going to use, but what we want is the certificate. So we can view the certificate, and if you go to details, you can copy to file. We're going to export it, base64, and I'm going to put that right on my desktop. I'll call this Microsoft.sir. To import this certificate, first let's copy it into the bin folder of our Cognos Analytics installation. Since this is just my laptop, everything is in defaults. I go to the C program files, IBM Cognos Analytics bin, and paste it here. This will save us typing in a moment. Next, we need to open a command window as administrator, and then change directory to our Cognos installation bin folder. Finally, we're going to run the third-party certificate tool that comes with Cognos. You're going to enter the command line, and it will execute and then give you status on it. If you're like me and have run this test about eight different times already because I'm making a video, you're going to see certificate already exists. For the rest of you doing this for the first time, it'll tell you successful or give you an error as to why it didn't work. The most common error is that you did not run the command prompt as administrator, and thus it didn't let you edit the certificate store. We are now ready to start our Cognos Analytics installation and start adding users from Azure AD. So I come back to Cognos. Yes, we want to save changes. and we start it up. With Cognos Analytics now running, we go to the URL we entered, and since this was a new install, we still have anonymous access allowed. So from here, we go to our profile and sign in you'll see we're hitting our Azure AD directory. I log in as myself, username, password, and because we have two-factor authentication enabled, I now have a far more secure Cognos installation. And it was that easy. And if I want to add more users, I just go to People, Accounts, 
Azure AD. You can add them by name, use a unique identifier, which in most cases is the email address. You can also add groups from Azure or upload a CSV, which has all of these IDs in it to save you a little bit of typing. And that's all there is to it. Hope you found this useful.